Hello again, everybody. This is Kevin. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video, so I figured I would warm myself back up and do a pretty straightforward, quick one. In this video in Event Master Toolset, I'm going to show you how to change the canvas size of a screen destination to follow a background connector. This is going to allow you to use a native background, even if the actual pixel resolution of the destination does not match one to one. So we're going to do this with a two projector blend uh, and we're going to create a custom resolution of 3240 1080, apply that to a native background, alter the size of the native background of the destination and we'll be good to go. So to warm up, I'm going to build a two projector blend. I have other videos that show you how to do this. So I've built the two screen destination or the two output destination. I'll go to the contextual adjust tab. I'm going to go to the wide screen tab and I'm going to set my overlap to 600 pixels. There is another video that shows you all the steps and everyone's happy. So I'm not gonna center justify it just yet, and this is gonna make sense in about two and a half minutes. But if we notice, right now my canvas is 3840 1080 based on the output connectors. My viewable, however, is 3240 because we're taking the 600 pixels and overlap them in the dead center. Technically, this black region here on the right, or could be the left, or could be both, is still being accounted for in the overall canvas. Meaning, as we know with a native background, a native background must match the destination's resolution one-to-one. -one. So as of right now, if I wanted to use a native background on this destination, it has to be 3840 1080, following this model here with the pixels of black wherever they're supposed to be. Now, if your content creator can do that, then you have a good day at the office. However, if your content creator cannot do that, or if you're using something like PowerPoint or Keynote, which doesn't have the ability to do the XY offset and is not baked at the content, you have a bad day. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a few steps process. First, we're gonna create a custom format. I have another video that talks about custom formats. I probably even do the same exact exercise. I, I'm a pretty repeatable person. So I'm gonna to go to custom format and I'm gonna create a custom format. I'm a simple person. I'm gonna call 3840 1080p at 5994 hertz, not hertz, and not five. So I want to literally copy an actual resolution. I could keep a custom format one, but are you gonna remember that five days from now when you're sleep deprived and need caffeine on a show? I don't know. So <clears throat> I'm now gonna to go to the contextual adjust tab and this takes me to the VESA calculator. If I scroll down to the bottom, here I can actually have the system calculate the VESA parameters for the margins and blankings for me. If you're you know, smarter than I am, which a lot of you are, you can type in your own timing protocols here. If you don't know what those mean, as, as do I. Here, let me move my camera out of the way. Uh, <laughs> so once again, here's the timing protocol. So at the very bottom is the VESA calculator. Should I look this, this way? Right there. Ah. <laughs> so what I do is I type what I want it to be. I want 3240, I want 1080, and I want 59.94. Now as of version 9.1, uh, 9.2, barcode now defaults to having reduced blanking version one as the default protocol. It used to be being turned off, now it's version one. You might want to use version two. Uh, but we'll keep it version one for this demonstration right now. I'm gonna hit calculate, but now importantly, hit apply. Now you're gonna notice all the parameters up top have changed. Now one little note before I proceed, notice that the ref uh, refresh rate is not 59.94. So I'm just gonna actually manually change that to 59.94 because that timing protocol actually could make a difference. Let me move my camera back. Yay, now I'm back happy in my corner. All right. So I've built my native background, or I'm, I've built my custom format. I'm now gonna to go to a, a input connector and apply this custom format. Uh, so this will work of course on HDMI or DisplayPort. Uh, SDI only accepts SIPD connectors, AKA no custom formats, no custom EDIDs, no EDIDs in general. And I need to make sure I have a connector with dual link capabilities. 
technically, I will not technically, I'm on a Gen 2 E2, meaning every input slot can accept eight links of inputs when using a Gen 2 card. So that means uh, dual link takes two links of those eight. So I just need to make sure that my connector is set to at least dual link capacity. So if I go to, uh, you know, I'm going to do my tri combo card. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, well, I, I don't need to take away, but if you're on a gen one card, what you would have to do first typically is disable unused connectors. I don't have to do this here. I'm just showing you the process so you can know. I can now go to a connector, display port or HDMI, set the capacity to dual link. Now this connector is dual link capable. I'm now going to go to my background tab and I'm going to have this connector selected. I'm going to add a single background. Boom. Background turns red. I'm going to call this Kevin's widescreen background. Great. I'm now going to go to the contextual adjust tab of this background and I'm going to set it. Uh, the most important thing I need to do, uh, first I'm going to verify that I'm dual link here. Let me move my, oops, that's the wrong one, eh? Let me move my camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom to the format for the EDID. I want to make sure I can send this as an EDID down the connector so the computer can see it. So uh, what I did, once again, with the properties, I scrolled down to EDID. If I did this right, 3240, 1080 will be a selection. Here it is. Now, because I'm on a simulator and only because I'm on a simulator, I'm also going to change the format at the top of the page just so my simulated input confines what my EDID is. But it's in the field, you just really need to set the EDID, and then that's going to be sent to you from the computer. You'll be good to go. 3240, 1080. All right, let me move my camera back. So my work is not done. If I were to go to my programming page, go to native background, let me change the thumbnail mode. Let me uh, do a source thumbnail, background two, everyone's happy. If I were to attempt to drop this on the screen, it's gonna say background link count mismatch with canvas. Because once again, this is 3240, this is 3840. It does not take the overlap into account. Until now. So on the Destination tab and the contextual adjust tab, I can do this under output or wide. See where it says canvas size. So we have 30 of 40, 1080, 32, 40, 1080. Canvas size set to follow output. I'm going to change this to use background and watch what happens now. I'm going to plot, take my widescreen background. Watch what happens when I hit apply. First, keep note of 30 of 40. I'm going to hit apply. It's now changed the size of the canvas to confine to the background source. So this destination is now 3240. We basically just chopped off the excess black. So now, that means if I did my job properly, I'm going to go back to my programming page. I have my native background 3240, 1080. I'm going to drop it and boom. I have now applied a native background with a custom format of 3240 1080 onto a screen destination that technically is 3840 1080, but we confined the viewable can the canvas to the viewable canvas 3240 1080, thus allowing me to use a native background. Yay, Kevin! Uh. <laughs> so once again, this is my first video back in a little while. Thank you for your patience on that one. Hopefully, it makes sense to you. Uh, and we'll make some more videos and have some more fun and do some more video. All right, cheers, y'all.